radius and ulna are two long bones that form the skeleton of the forearm. They articulate with the humerus at its proximal extremity and with the bones of the carpus at its distal extremity. The ulna is caudal to the radius in the proximal part, but lateral to the distal part. In humans, the disposition of these bones allows pronation and supination movements. However, in most domestic animals, these bones are joined together, either because they have fused in pronation or due to ligamentous joints. If the bones are fused, as in ungulates, movement between them cannot occur. In carnivores, however, a certain degree of supination is possible, approximately 45 degrees in the dogs, and somewhat more in the cat. In these cases, the movement consists of the rotation in the proximal end of the radius. The fusion between the radius and ulna is maximal in equines. In these animals, only in the proximal part can bones be distinguished since from the middle of the forearm, the ulna is incorporated with the radius so that both bones form a single one. The radius is a simple rod-shaped bone. The bone is cranially compressed and slightly arced. The fovea of the radius head, which articulates with the humerus, is located at the proximal extremity. Also in this region, the collateral ligaments insert and in the medial border, the radial tuberosity is where the biceps brachii muscles insert. The most distal part of the body, which is more expanded, has three grooves in its cranial surface for the passage of tendons of the extensor muscles. In the trochlea, or distal extremity, is the carpal articular surface, concave in its cranial part and convex in the caudal. On the sides of the articular surface, there are two protrusions, the medial styloid process and the lateral styloid process, the latter representing the distal extremity of the ulna that has been incorporated into the radius. In equines, the ulna has a severely reduced body. Instead, its proximal extremity extends beyond the radius to form a large protrusion, the olecranon which constitutes the tip of the elbow. In its most dorsal part, there is a tuberosity in which the extensor muscles of the elbow are inserted, particularly the triceps brachii. On the olecranon, there is also the beak-shaped anconial process, where the anconius muscle is inserted. This fits into the olecranon fossa in the humerus. Distal to the anconial process, there is the trochlear notch, which articulates with the trochlea of the humerus. The body of the ulna is very small and is located caudally to the radius to which it is completely attached, except in an area of the proximal part in which they form the antibrachial interosseous space. The ulna in ruminants has a greater presence than in equines, so that it can be followed up to its distal extremity. Its body fuses with the radius in all its length except in two interosseous spaces. The olecranon is well developed and has a transversal notch. The body of the radius is rectilinear, widened in the extremities, and, dissimilar to equines, the distal extremity forms an oblique angle with the longitudinal axis of the bone. In carnivores, the radius and ulna are not fused and the articulation between them is done at each end, allowing a slight movement of supination. In the proximal extremity, the articular surfaces of the bones are the articular circumference of the radius and the radial notch of the ulna. This is determined on both sides by the coronoid processes, which encompass the proximal extremity of the radius. The joint at the distal end is made by the ulna notch of the radius and the articular circumference of the ulna. In addition to each other, these bones also articulate with the carpus. For this purpose, they have processes at their distal ends.